the first topic to discuss is special relativity. And uh, so special relativity is a subject which is very far from our everyday human conception of the word. It deals with, um, with uh, phenomena where things are going very, very fast. And so obviously because of that, it's really hard for our brain to imagine what happens. And so essentially we really rely on the mathematical foundation of, uh, of special relativity. And uh, so essentially what I want to show now is that uh, although we are going to be very mathematical, all these mathematics are not actually coming from very deep uh, uh, you know, physical constraints and so on. Um, so let's actually start with just saying that, that uh, the principle of relativity is, so principle of relativity is uh, based on two postulates. So postulates are something we just assume and uh, they don't actually need to come from anywhere. So um, these are coming actually from Einstein. So Einstein had these uh, two postulates. Postulates. Um, so postulate one is that the physics should be the same in all frames of reference. Physics should be the same in all frames of uh, reference. What do I mean by this? I think of um, Maxwell's laws. So example is uh, that uh, Maxwell's laws describe electromagnetism. They describe the electric field, let's say. So if I move my frame, then it shouldn't be that from now on, I cannot use Maxwell's laws to describe this uh, uh, other electric field viewed from a different uh, frame, which I'm now denoting with E prime. So th if that if Maxwell's laws dis describe E, then Maxwell's Low should also describe the e prime, right? So the, the the laws of physics should not depend on what frame we are viewing it from. And then uh, postulate uh, two is that uh, all observations show that uh, the speed of light is the same in all of these frames. So we introduce uh, C as the, the speed of uh, light. And the postulate says that C should uh, also be the same. So based on these two the statements, we will build the theory of special relativity. Next thing which we should describe is called the arc length. And the line element. So before we go that, we should uh, speak about one of the most important concepts in uh, special relativity. And that's called space time. Space time. So space time 
is a set of events in a frame of reference. So you can consider this to be a collection of points. You know, like we have a four dimensional, well, we have a three dimensional space and one dimensional time. So together we have a four dimensional object in a frame, which I'm going to call K. We can really consider this just to be points in a four dimensional, um, uh, you know, like you have a coordinate system with, uh, with these four dimensions and it's a, uh, it's a point in that, uh, in that um, coordinate system. So now uh, we can define the arc uh, length. So let's just say that we have two frames. We have uh, the frame K in which we have the coordinates X, Y, Z, and T. And we have another frame called k prime, in which we have the coordinates x prime, y prime, z prime, and t prime. So that means that uh, I'm going to make you know, the two-dimensional example. Um, I have x prime here and t prime here. Oh, well, actually, I should not start with this. I have, uh, well, obviously, x and t. Well, I mean, I could start with this too, but let's just say it starts with X and, X and T. And then I have a point here that's going to be described by X. And um, since the other coordinate is T, this is going to be X and T. But then I can say that, okay, I want to look at this, you know, from a different point of view. And that different point of view is defined by the coordinate system x prime and t prime. So the very same point is actually now described by x prime and t prime. Well, actually, if I want to be, you know, like x and t could describe any points, if I, if I really want to be specific, this, I can say that this is the first event I'm discussing. So this is x1 prime and t1 prime. And uh, originally it was also the x1 and the t1. So let's just actually move on with, uh, with this. That I can also define two events. So I would say that this is two frames. And now the event. The first one I am going to call x1, y1, z1, and t1. So as we just discussed, if I move to the other frame, you know that's going to become x1 prime and y1 prime and z1 prime and t1 prime. And then if I have a second event, I was just going to call it x2, y2, z2, t2. And if I move to the other frame, that's going to be x2 prime, y2 prime, z2 prime, and t2 prime. So this is now another point here. You know, like my example is always just uh, in the simpler case, x and t. But then this is x2 and t2, which is from looking from the green frame is going to be x2 prime and t2 prime. Parentheses, if I want to be um, consistent with my notion. So now that I have these two events, um, the arc length is essentially the length between these two events. That we also say that these two events are connected with the light signal. So, you know, let's just say that somebody switches on a flashlight and somebody else sees that. And then they also switch on a flashlight and then they see, send a, a light signal back. So, you know, X, X1, X1, T1 is when I switch on the light 
and then x to t2 is when the other person sees the light. So, so essentially, we are looking for the distance between these two points. This distance is what we call the, the arc length. But there is actually one more thing that we could usually do, but let's just say that we first calculate this, let's call it L displacement. And um, we're calculating this from the fact what we learned in, um, in primary school, that this length is the same as the speed multiplied with the time spent between the two events. So as I mentioned, that um, the, um, the light which we are shining is normal light. So sp the speed of that light is going to be the speed of light C. And I multiply that with the difference between the two times. So, you know, T2 happened later. So I am going to subtract from T2, T1. And so that's actually the length or the, yes, exactly the length it took for this light signal to go between these two events. But we can also look at this thing from the geometrical point of view. And you know, see that this is essentially a triangle here. Uh, so I have a triangle which goes from here to, to here. And then I have which goes from here to here. You know, these are the two sides of the triangle. <clears throat> so I could use Pythagorean's theorem. And then this uh, L, essentially the L squared, is going to be, you know, X, the difference between, um, you know, this was uh, X2 here, and this was X1 here. So <clears throat> uh, what I do is that I am subtracting X2 minus X1, take the square of it, right? And then I add the other side. So I add uh, this uh, other coordinate. Uh, if we are in the three usual dimension, then uh, you know this is going to be um, y two minus y one squared plus the z two minus the z two. Oh, sorry, z one, uh, and then we the. the uh, Square this in a second. So this was just from the poor geometrical uh, point of view between these these two events, and um, so obviously I could take um, the square of this L, and so from that the square is going to be C squared so that we have something very similar to this structure down here, c squared t2 minus t1 squared. So both of these describe L squared, which means that these two are actually the same. And so what's interesting to, to look at is that we could calculate the exact same thing in the primed version, and we will get the same thing. And because of that, it makes sense to see that, well, okay, so um, maybe I should rearrange a bit and uh, say that uh, this is actually um, the definition of the arc length is that I take C squared T2 minus T1 squared and uh, you know, I, um, this was on the left side, so this equals to this thing, to the red thing and uh, so I can subtract all the what is on the right side x2 minus x1 squared minus y2 minus y1 squared minus z2 minus z1 squared. So you know, this was L, or the left hand side was L squared, and the right hand side was also L squared. So when I subtract these two, 
if my object is going with the speed of light, then this is going to give us zero. And it's also true that uh, if I have c squared t2 prime minus t2, sorry, t1, t1 prime minus x2 prime minus x1 prime squared, I put the square here, minus y2 prime minus y1 prime, and then this thing is squared as well, minus t z2 prime minus z1 prime squared, this is also going to give us zero. So this set seems to be independent in which frame we are looking at it. And this is called invariant. So the this thing is invariant independently of what frame we are looking at. And because of that, it makes sense to, to make a definition of it. And so this is going to be called the arc uh, length you know, with s. And so it's between event one and two. And it's the prime version. While up here, we had s, one, two. And essentially, this is the squared. So if we want to take uh, you know, the arc length itself, then we are going to take the square root of uh, this whole, whole thing. So if uh, c is constant, that implies that uh, from this, if uh, s1, uh, 2 is 0, that means that s1, uh, 2 prime is also zero, called in So the next thing to, to define is the line element, which is very similar. So the line element is defined to be ds, so I am changing to ds squared d equal to c squared dt squared minus dx squared minus dy squared minus dz squared. So, okay, so how did we get to this? Essentially what we assumed is that these things are all small numbers and in, so for the differences we have made a new variable which we call you know the t dx and dy and dz respectively so you know this was the x but essentially the prime here this was the t prime this was the i prime and this was the z prime. From this, we essentially rewrote it and uh, got a, a small part of uh, this line uh, of the arc length. And um, essentially, we can also say that uh, the ds um, prime square is the same as the ds squared. And from that, we know that the s, the arc length prime square is the same as the s squared. And um, so based on that, we know that uh, s prime is the same as s. So the line element is independent of the frame of reference and the arc length is invariant. The next thing to discuss in our little search for invariant variables is called proper time. So what I just say this is 1.3 proper 
time. So that, let's just start with uh, the definition. Definition uh, of proper time, which is denoted with the Greek letter tau, is the time that is measured, measured by the frame which is moving and we are moving together with by the moving frame so let's just say that we are setting up our little coordinate system x and t and we have uh, two events we have the first event starting at t1 and this moves into another event which we call t2 and so imagine that we are sitting on the object which is moving and we are measuring time the, which is spent in uh, in the frame moving together with the object so essentially the um the the, the proper time tau is going to be the length of uh, this uh, um, little path so let's just remind ourselves again that we have two coordinate systems k in which we have the x the y the z and the t as the parameters and we have the k prime system or frame in which we have the dx prime the y prime the z prime and the t prime so the definition of k prime was that we are sitting on the object and so we are moving together with the moving object and so that means that uh, the, these distances these these uh, the difference between the coordinates between us and the moving object while we are moving together with it is going to be zero so dx in all the, all the spatial dimensions so dx dy and dz primes are all zero and uh, and dt is the only non-zero uh, parameter in this k prime system so to derive uh, the proper time you're going to use what we learned earlier that the ds squared is the same as the ds prime squared we were discussing it earlier that if uh, we're discussing something which is connected with light signal so the moving object is moving the speed of light and these are both zero so that's trivially equivalent however if it's not moving with the speed of light this will be still true so okay let's uh, insert the definition of ds squared that was c squared d t squared minus d x squared minus d y squared minus d z squared and then the same thing should be repeated on the right hand side so i have c prime squared right but then c the speed of light it's the post second postulate of uh, of special relativity is always same is this independent of the frame it's always the same value so c prime is just the same as c i'm not going to put the prime there i am going to put the square uh, and then we have the t prime squared and then we have dx dy dz primes squares but all of these are zero so the square of that is going to be zero too we want to express uh, the t um, prime and so i can do that by uh, essentially dividing with uh, c squared and uh, taking the square root however we just should uh, note that then whatever is here is the ds so essentially when we do so okay so first of all i could move it here that what we do is that we put that we have the ds squared over c squared under a square root Right? I divided it with the C and then everything is squared. So to get the T prime, um, I need to take a, a square root. So um, if I take the square root, I could take the square root of each of them. So that essentially is ds over C is uh, what, the, what the T prime is. All right, so let's just insert what we have. It's C squared, T T squared minus D x squared minus d y squared minus d z squared and we divide this with uh, c squared and then we take the square root of this thing so now we shall do a little trick 
which is very common in the physics uh, world, that we are going to multiply with 1, but in a special way. You know, multiplying with 1 doesn't change anything, so we can do that anytime. And so that 1 is going to be dt prime over dt prime. Actually, no, sorry, it's going to be dt over dt. So I am multiplying with dt, but then when I am dividing with dt, I'm going to move this in here under the square root, so it's going to be dt squared. So that's actually nice, because we have a d, uh, c squared dt squared here, so this thing just means that I have a 1 minus, and then I have uh, dx squared plus dy squared plus dz squared divided with uh, c, c squared dt squared, and this uh, whole thing is under a square root, and I should not uh, forget that there is a d, dt in the, in the right side, which is now less uh, visible. So there is a dt here. Okay, so uh, the reason why we, we did this is that we should look at what is what's happening uh, here. We have the infinitesimal changes in the coordinates, and then we divide that with the infinitesimal change of the time, and then we take the square of that. So that is the definition of a derivative. So that what happens there is that we're taking the derivative of the coordinates, and then we take the square of it. So the derivative of the coordinates is velocity. So we have a velocity squared over c squared, well, velocity was the red part, um, the rest is with the white part, and so we had this subtracted from 1, we had this whole thing under the square root, that's the same, I'm just continuing the previous uh, line, and we had a dt here. So if you have seen special relativity somewhere else, this thing, 1 minus b squared over c squared is coming up a, a lot, um, and so it's going to be very important in the future. And so we can actually ask the question, what is the velocity of? So this v is the, uh, the velocity of uh, the moving frame from the uh, k frame. Right? Since there is no velocity when we are moving together with the frame, this is viewed from, from the outside. All right, so what we were looking at uh, earlier is that we, we were interested in figuring out the time difference between the t2 prime minus the t1 prime. So I'm obviously taking this the subtraction from t2 because that's the time which happened later, and so I want to have a positive number here, and so I'm stopping with that. So to do that, uh, we already just calculated what uh, the t prime is, so the infinitesimal change, if I want to figure out what the whole change is, I need to integrate the infinitesimal. So I can just input that uh, what dt is, I just calculated, that's 1 minus v squared over c squared under the square root of dt, and I should have my uh, boundaries that's between t1 and t2, right? So what's interesting to, to look at here is that this number, 1 minus v squared over c squared, is 1 if v is 0, which is not very interesting if the other object is not moving. But if v is non-zero, then this is going to be a number which is less than 1. So this, is, this value here is less or equal to 1. If it was 1, then this integral would be t2 minus t1. But since it is less than or equal than, uh, than 1, this whole integral is going to be less than integral, less or equal to t2 minus t1. Okay, so what really happened here? Well, so these t2 and t1 are in the k frame, while the t2 and the t1 primes are in the k prime frame. So this means that the time difference viewed from an outside world is going to be more 
and the time difference measured in the moving frame. The time that the clock measures in the moving frame is less than the time me measured from the outside. So this sounds weird and uh, non-logical. So the way to figure it out if it's true or not is to make to take experiments. And so one example that we can bring up is the lifetime of the muon. So a muon is like the electron. However, um, it decays after some time, it decays to an electron. And then the time while it does that is called the lifetime. And so if the muon goes fast, then the rules and laws of special relativity should apply. So that means that uh, the muon lives longer viewed from the outside world than uh, viewed from its own world. So it's in its own world, it decays after some nanoseconds, but that will look longer uh, as, an as an outside observer. So these were studies, like cosmic muons were measured, and indeed this is what we see. So although this sounds very weird and sounds paradoxical, this is something which is one of the special properties of, uh, of, uh, of special relativity. Okay, so all of our um, things here are essentially going in the direction of, of, um, of defining tau. So tau, we just actually calculated, is uh, the integral of the dt prime. And um, we can do a little trick again that uh, here we agreed that uh, dt prime can be calculated as ds over c. So c is the speed of light, that's a constant. So what if we have a constant under an integral, then according to the laws of integration, that constant could be brought out. So I could say that this is 1 over c integral of ds. And so ds was uh, the line element, and it's an invariant variable. So that means that this tau is going to be an invariant variable as well. That is one of the reasons why the line element was so important. And now we have a second uh, uh, value, which is this invariant. Next thing to discuss is uh, the first uh, big thing in, uh, in special relativity. That is the, <clears throat> the Lorentz transformation. Lorentz trans. And uh, we are going to deal with this in one plus one uh, dimension. Okay, so the Lorentz transformation is a uh, is a transformation that uh, translates coordinates from one frame to another. So I have um, <clears throat> x. Uh, well, but I have x, y, and z and uh, t coordinates which uh, we are going to move to the x prime, y prime, z prime, and uh, t prime coordinates. Well, I said that we are dealing with this in, uh, in uh, 1 plus 1 dimensions, so I'm not going to deal with z and, uh, and y for now. I'm going to deal with x and, uh, and t. And uh, we are also going to assume that um, that uh, the difference between this k and k prime frames is that they are moving with a constant velocity v. So it's a constant velocity between k and k prime. There is one more thing that we could just do, is that uh, in physics we love to 
speak about dimensions. And um, so X, Y, and Z have all dimensions of meters. However, uh, T has dimensions of seconds. So we can easily fix that. And actually, when, in earlier when we were just discussing the line element, we always had C dt in the way. So we will actually, um, instead of, uh, of T, we will always speak about C times T as the, the speed of the light times the, uh, the time. Because like this, the, the, we, they all have the same units. And so actually, if there is one more thing that we can do, we will do, is to rearrange and put time as its special uh, dimension in a, in a certain sense to the first point. So we are going to discuss um, CT and uh, X, and uh, where I put the CT first and X like this. And I'm also moving from the row vector notation to the column vector notation. So we will move from CT to CT prime X prime. This is the one, uh, um, one plus one dimensional change. And actually, the Lorentz transformation is usually denoted with this uppercase lambda parameter. OK, so to achieve all this, and we are interested in what lambda is, essentially. Um, what is this uh, transformation? So to, to achieve this, what uh, we can ask is, what is the connection between the coordinates in, uh, in k and k prime that is invariant? And we've been having some introduction to, to this question. And so the answer to this is the arc length. The arc length is invariant. Um, and so what are the transformations that keep the arc length invariant? Um, that's the question. So what uh, keeps uh, ds invariant? And so the answer to that is uh, that it's displacement You know, if I move the object, it doesn't change the arc length. Uh, you can do reflections. And we can do rotations. And, uh, and all these things can be actually described mathematically by a, by a matrix. Uh, so these are described by matrices. So we have a vector, we apply a matrix to it and get another vector. Um, and so it's a two dimensional uh, vector here, C T prime X prime. So our matrix is going to be a two times two dimensional matrix, and we get C T X as the outcome. We don't know anything about this matrix, so we're just going to denote its elements with uh, some letters, and then let's just uh, use the Greek letters alpha, beta, gamma, and uh, delta here. So. Uh, the fact that we want the arc length to, to be invariant, that, that uh, will imply some conditions on this. So we, we say that uh, uh, ds uh, uh, squared is the same as ds prime squared. And uh, so ds squared is calculated the ct squared. Well, actually, I am not speaking about the infinitesimal version right now. So although this is true, this is also true. The S uh, uh, squared is the same as the S prime squared. So CT squared minus X squared minus Y squared minus Z, which, but we are discussing one plus one dimension, so those are not, uh, not here. This will be the same as C prime, which we discussed to be the same as C. So T, T 
d prime squared minus x prime squared. We want this to be invariant, so this must be true. Okay, so uh, we can do a matrix multiplication from here. And so we do matrix multiplication that ct equals this term with this term, then we add this term with this term, right? That's the way how we do matrix vector multiplications. So uh, when I uh, want to express uh, ct, I am going to express it from um, from this uh, matrix. So, um, well, I can write it down. I guess it's uh, easier. Ct is the same as alpha times Ct prime. So, um, alpha times Ct prime plus beta times x prime plus beta times x prime. And then when I uh, calculate uh, the x, that's going to be gamma times the ct prime. So um, gamma times ct prime. And then um, the green, let's say, um, delta times the x prime is the other element plus delta times x prime. And so this is the same as this line. Uh, so going back to the right, this is the same as x. So um, I will insert this information back here. So from this, uh, we get that uh, alpha ct prime. So the ct is, I, I am just putting this thing in here. So alpha ct plus beta times x prime is the ct, which was get squared. I'm doing this term. This term is this term. And then uh, I subtract the x, which is here. So minus gamma ct prime plus delta x prime, and then it's squared. So this is the uh, wiggly line. And uh, so this equals right inside, which was just ct prime squared minus x prime squared. <clears throat> so now everything is expressed with uh, t primes and uh, and x uh, primes. So let's, you know, just take the squares so that this thing will be on the square, this thing will be on the square, plus I have this thing times this thing times two. And then I have the same thing squaring these guys, squaring these guys, plus two times this guy and this guy. And so I will have terms in which I have ct squared, ct prime squared. I have terms which is x prime squared. And again, the same thing is coming from here. So we can group these together. And uh, what we get is that, um, maybe I can move it down, is that after, after uh, calculating the squares and uh, re grouping, which I'm kind of lazy to, to do, although it's not hard, right? It's just uh, uh, following the, the formula. Uh, what we get is, uh, is going to be alpha squared minus comma squared is the factor in front of ct prime squared. And then we have the terms with the 2c. So we have a 2c um, <clears throat> alpha beta minus comma 
data and this is where we have the terms the cross terms of containing both t and x and then we need to have the terms which are the mult the factor of uh, the x uh, prime square so that's going to be delta squared minus beta squared and as i said this is the one which goes with the x prime uh, squared so that's the left hand side and the right hand side stays the same this is dt uh, prime squared minus x prime squared okay uh, so that just means that uh, whatever is in front of uh, c t prime and whatever is in front of x prime squared must be the same coefficient i have a ct prime squared here and i have a ct prime squared here with one and then i have a, a tx um prime version which has which doesn't exist on the right side and there is an x uh, prime which exists on the right side with a minus one so this will impose constraints on these uh, alpha beta gamma delta uh, numbers so we have the condition that alpha squared minus gamma squared this thing is the same as the coefficient here that is one and then we also have this thing that uh, alpha beta minus uh, gamma delta is the same what's in front of t prime x prime on the right hand side that is zero and then we also have that this condition that the the delta squared minus beta squared is uh well so it's a minus of that and then i have a minus here too so that's just going to be plus one in the end and just looking at this um if it was with the plus sign then something squared plus something squared equals one that's something which is very similar to the sine squared plus cosine squared equals one identity but it's with a minus and uh and it just means that uh it seems that uh special relativity favors the hyperbolic geometry instead of our uh, euclidean geometry and actually this is where uh Boyai janos had some some nice developments in mathematics so that this has some um, relevance for for hungarians as well and so uh the way the the, the the functions for which this is true is the hyperbolic version of these trigonometrical functions so if we set alpha to be the cosine hyperbolic also just called cosh in the english um, and then gamma is uh, set to sine hyperbolic which is also called cinch in, uh, in english then these things will be true so these are functions which means that we actually need to have some kind of parameter in them and uh, that parameter is called the chi which well you know like you could put anything here but we are going to put the parameter that's called chi that's again a greek letter and uh, and has something to do with uh, why uh, x is used so much in uh, in math so a uh, physicist are kind of lazy and then there is an other version to to denote these functions so ch just means the cosh as well so sometimes i will write uh, um, ch because it's just shorter and then c s h and is going to be the other one so this is the uh, the cosine the hyperbolic and this is the sine hyperbolic function so this is what we get from from this and then uh we also have the um uh alpha gamma so we also have the beta and the delta parameters or actually i probably should have written it in the other way around although it doesn't really matter so uh 
you know this frame structure because the delta is first that's going to be the cosine hyperbolic of a, a variable and we don't know if that variable is the same or not so i'm going to just put uh, chi prime on it and here i have the sine hyperbolic of the same chi prime and uh, and actually, in physics, this has a meaning. And this chi is called rapidity. Rapidity. It's only true in, uh, in one plus one dimensions. That uh, what we're going to say in a second. But the naming is true. So the, the chi is called rapidity. And it essentially just uh, um, you know, gives us um on another variable instead of uh, having the four variables now we have just two variables which is of course good so i actually just used two equations so uh, from this we got that from um from this we get that there is still this guy and so from this guy we can just insert these things and so we get that this is ch chi times the sh chi uh, squared or not squared the prime minus ch chi prime sh chi chi and this equals to zero so the from this actually that the only way to really satisfy this is to put to to figure out that chi is actually the same uh, well that's a very ugly chi um, so we, 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 from this we learn that chi and chi uh, prime are the same thing so finally if instead of having four parameters we have one parameter chi and that is uh, that that uh, we take the, the hyperbolic functions and uh, and get this matrix which is essentially the Lorentz transformation uh, lambda in uh, one plus one dimensions is then going to be that uh, if we want to get ctx from um, c t prime x prime, what we need to apply is the cosine hyperbolic of chi sine hyperbolic of chi here, sine hyperbolic of chi here, and cosine hyperbolic of chi here. So this is the Lorentz transformation in one plus one dimensions. And it still seems like that it's just some mathematical uh, transformation for now. So let's just do some physics with it. And uh, and let's just say that that the we, we are tracking the or the movement of the origin in the uh, k prime system and so that we say that the x uh, you know like to, to figure out some physics what we do is that uh, we look at some special conditions so um origin of k frame okay, prime frame sorry in the k frame implies that we have x prime to be zero so um, if x prime is zero right this is a zero number then ct and again i am applying you know the matrix vector multiplications so ct will be ct equals the cosine hyperbolic chi applied to ct prime plus the sine hyperbolic chi of this term but it's a zero term so i don't need to do anything else there and then when i'm calculating x and x is calculated to be the C H uh, chi times the C T that I can actually write down immediately. So this is the 
uh, sine hyperbolic of chi times ct prime plus uh, the cosine hyperbolic chi times zero again. So there is nothing to write there at all. So from this, we can express uh, the, the ratio of the two. So if I divide x by ct, then uh, I get sine, um, but first of all, that just means that I have x over t is just v, so this is v over c, and so applying what we just learned, I am dividing this bottom part with the upper part, so that's sine hyperbolic over cosine hyperbolic, and uh, that is the definition. Well, okay, I can write it down. So this is uh, sine uh, chi over cosine hyperbolic chi, ct prime, ct prime, so that just gives us a, a one, the thing to write it down. And thus, we had the tangent for the sine over cosine functions, we have the tangent hyperbolic for the hyperbolic uh, geometry. So this is ton h chi. And uh, there is also the shorter notion, t h chi. So finally, we have something to say that uh, we don't, what chi is. The chi, well, the tangent hyperbolic of the chi is velocity over the speed of light. And uh, so we also have um, these very similar mathematical identities that we uh, had with sine and uh, cosine as well, that the sine uh, chi or any number can be calculated as the tangent hyperbolic over one minus the tangent hyperbolic squared of that uh, same variable, and this is under the square root. So this is just math at this point. Uh, and again, the same thing with the cosine hyperbolic is uh, going to be one over one minus the tangent hyperbolic squared of the variable chi under a square root. So these look very similar to our expressions with sine, you know, sine x and tangent x and uh, cosine x and tangent x and, and so on. So <clears throat> now we know that uh, uh, what, uh, what uh, the um, tangent hyperbolic uh, chi is, that's v over c, that's a very important uh, physical thing. So like v, c, v over c is the same as tangent hyperbolic uh, uh, chi. So, uh, so based on this, we can put back our original coordinates. So sine hyperbolic chi is the same as tangent hyperbolic uh, x, which was figured out to be v over c over 1 minus tangent hyperbolic uh, uh, chi squared. So that's v over c squared and then uh, C, uh, cosine hyperbolic of chi is the same as one over one minus uh, the uh, V squared over C squared under a square root. And then uh, C, T, right, I'm, I'm copying this uh, matrix multiplication, C, T, x is the same as, and then we have the cosines and sines. So I have a, a, a hyperbolic, so this is a ch chi, and then I have sh chi, and then I have sh chi here, and ch chi here, and I have ct prime and x prime. But so from this, at, uh, ct is the same as uh, ch chi uh, ct prime plus 
sine hyperbolic uh, uh, chi times x prime and we get that uh, x is the same as uh, sine hyperbolic so i'm multiplying you know this guy with this guy and this guy with this guy so sine uh, hyperbolic uh, chi times uh, ct prime plus cosine hyperbolic uh, chi multiplied with uh, x prime and then i insert that the ct prime over 1 over v squared c squared under the square root plus the ch chi which was uh, multiplied with the x so i have v times x prime divided with uh, the um, with the c um, so this is divided with c from um, from here and then the whole thing is divided with uh, the square root of uh, 1 minus v squared over c squared and uh, and then here i have the sign first so it's a v over c times c t prime divided with c so that those c's are raising each other and then i divide with uh, the square root you know one minus v squared c squared and i add to this the cosine hyperbolic of chi which is uh, the one over something so i can just have x prime in the denominator and get one minus v squared c squared under the square root uh, here it means that i have the same things uh, down here so it's easy to add them so i have x prime plus v t prime divided with the square root of one minus v squared c squared I have again the same things in the denominator. So I have C T prime plus V well V over C times X prime divided with the square root of one minus C oh sorry V V squared over C squared. So if I divide this thing with C this further equals to T prime plus V over C squared x prime divided with 1 over 1 minus v squared c squared and this formula should be familiar to what uh, you have learned in high school so finally we reached something which you probably already know but we made steps to go through and uh, derive them next thing we should uh, do is uh, to discuss how we are adding velocities in uh, one plus one dimension so this is 1.5 and saying adding velocities. In uh, one plus one uh, dimensions. So we just uh, discussed that uh, the Lorentz transformation is that we get CT X by doing cosine hyperbolic uh, chi sine hyperbolic chi and uh, sine hyperbolic chi here and cosine hyperbolic chi here so this is a matrix and we multiply that with ct prime and x prime and so let's just say that uh, we have uh, um, now we have two frames <clears throat> k prime and uh, k prime prime and then we move the to the k prime frame we are doing that so okay we have a k frame we, we are doing that with velocity v1 which is described by uh, chi one rapidity and when we are moving with uh from the v the k k to the k k prime to the k prime prime you're doing that with v2 that is uh with the chi 2 
uh, rapidity parameter. So I will modify this that uh, any chi will become chi1 and I should have another matrix in which we get to see ct prime chi prime from the uh, ct prime prime and the x prime prime oops that's too many primes just two primes uh, coordinates and so what we do here is almost the same as here we just um, ch chi 2 s h chi 2 s h chi 2 and c h chi 2 is the matrix so we could also think about what happens when we move well, well so i could write that this is uh, right so we, uh, what happens when we want to move from the k to the k prime prime in one step so that will mean that we have to do these two transformations after each after each other so the ct x vector can be calculated as doing one of the uh, transformations chi uh, ch chi 1 s h chi 1 s h chi 1 c h chi 1 times the other transformation c h chi 2 s h chi 2 s h chi 2 c h uh, chi 2 and we apply that to the um, c d prime and x prime this is supposed to be prime prime here after we do this matrix multiplication with this matrix what uh, we actually get hyperbolic chi 1 plus the chi 2 is what we see here with this modification so this is the same um, as saying that this is the cosine hyperbolic of chi 1 plus chi chi 2 and i have a uh, sine hyperbolic uh, x uh, oh, sorry chi 1 plus chi 2 here and again sine hyperbolic uh, of uh, xi, uh, xi 1 and chi uh, 2 here and uh, the cosine hyperbolic of chi 1 plus chi to here so this is my matrix this is the this is exactly the same as this the multiplication of two the of two of these matrices and i get again the same thing here with the ct prime prime and x prime prime here so what we learn from this is that uh, this uh, chi the rapidity is an addictive additive additive parameter in uh, this one plus one dimensional world so chi's can be added velocities not that easily but all right so let's remind ourselves what this uh, chi really is we say that the chi 1 is unless is coming from the velocity v1 and that is the tangent hyperbolic of uh, chi 1 and the uh, the v over c is the tangent hyperbolic of the rapidity 2 so um the final velocity which uh, we can just call v so final the low city v that's going to be v over c as we just discussed that the uh, the these rapidities can be added so that is going to be the tangent uh, hyperbolic of chi 1 plus the chi 2 so you know this just means that this is the sine hyperbolic of uh, chi 1 plus chi 2 
and that's divided with the cosine of the same parameters uh, chi1 and chi, uh, chi2. And so, again, uh, what we do is what actually we would have seen earlier is that this is the same as uh, cosine hyperbolic uh, chi1 multiplied with the sine hyperbolic uh, chi2 plus the sine hyperbolic of uh, chi1 multiplied with the cosine hyperbolic of the uh, chi2. And this is divided with the formula of uh, the uh, cosine hyperbolic of uh, chi1 multiplied with this cosine hyperbolic of chi2 plus sine hyperbolic of chi1 and sine hyperbolic of chi2. Okay, so um, this looks a bit uh, complicated on the first uh, look. However, we can say that we could actually divide with uh, the cosine hyperbolic uh, chi2, right? Uh, the cosine hyperbolic chi2 is here, and it's also here. So if we do the simplification for that, we have a tangent hyperbolic of chi2 plus tangent hyperbolic of chi1 up here. Um, and um, and then we have well, so I actually divided with uh, chi. I did the simplification with the with this, uh, the cosine hyperbolic chi one and the cosine hyperbolic chi two as well. That's how I ended up with the tangent hyperbolic uh, chi one and, and two. <clears throat> so since I did that, I this is going to become one. And then with the sum, uh, we have to do these divisions with the sine hyperbolics as well. So this is going to lead to uh, the tangent hyperbolic of uh, chi1 multiplied with the tangent hyperbolic of uh, chi2. So that's nice because all of this is physical. And because this, all of these mean uh, ratio, velocity, and the speed of light. So this is v1 over, sorry, v2. Well, actually, it doesn't matter because it's an uh, addiction, so addition is uh, it's not an addiction, it's an addition. So uh, this is v1 over c plus v2 over c, and this is divided with uh, 1 plus the v1 multiplied with the v2 divided by c plus 3, c times c, so that's a c squared. By multiplying with uh, c, we get that velocity, the final velocity is v1 plus v2, which you do you see from the classical point of view, but we need to divide this with, uh, with <clears throat> 1 plus v1 times the v2, and divided by c2. And this is the formula to really add the velocities. This is the formula to add velocities in the classical way as well, just uh, when v and v2 are very small, that just means that uh, we have a small number. So well, okay, I can say that uh, if uh, v1 um, and uh, v2 are much, much less than 1, then their multiplication v1 times v2 is even smaller than 1. And then when you go to a very small number, you know, v1 times v2 was already a small number, right? If the huge number is square, that's essentially zero. And so in this, in this case, uh, what we have is that we get back that uh, v is approximately the same as v1 plus uh, v2. And then we can also go into the other special case, that what if, uh, what if, uh, v1 you know is the speed of light and then v2 is just uh, v2 then so i i uh, let you say you know that uh, this is the classical uh, special relativity problem that i have a train which is moving um with some velocity v2 
and I am standing on it and I'm switching on a flashlight and so what's going to be the speed of, uh, of the light on my, on my train since um, it has an original speed plus now we should add the speed of the train so if we do that then um, from this we get that it is uh, c plus uh, v2 and 1 plus uh, uh, v, v1 was c so I can just you know divide with that uh, so I have v2 over c and um, and so mm, that's the same as writing c plus uh, v uh, divided with uh, c plus uh, v2 over c right so then these things uh, cancel out and i get that it is the speed of light indeed the other thing which is less interesting but we could look at it is that if uh, if um, v1 equals v2 equals the speed of light so from this we get c plus uh, c equals one or divided it all over c squared over c squared so that leads us to 2c in the numerator and c squared over c squared is 1 so that leads to a 2 and that leads to a c as well so when you add two objects which go with the speed of light they will still go with the speed of light so this was all for uh, adding velocities so far we have been discussing uh, adding velocities and uh, doing transformations in one plus one dimension however our word is not actually one plus uh, one dimensional uh, it's three plus one dimensional so the next step which we do that's uh, 1.6 is that we do the Lorentz transformation in um, three plus one dimension so Earlier, we, uh, we got to this result that uh, the time can be calculated from the t prime and x prime coordinates to the t coordinate by adding t prime plus uh, the uh, velocity of the moving train over c squared x uh, prime divided with the 1 minus v squared over uh, c squared under the square root. And we got that x is the same as v t prime plus x prime divided with the same one over uh, one minus v squared over v, uh, c squared. And so we were doing this. Uh, if we are doing this transformation in the x direction, then the other two coordinates, the y is the same as y prime, and z will be the same as z prime. Right? So you're not changing those. So this leads to the matrix form of the, the uh, this transformation to be ct, x, y, and z vector is uh, can be calculated as having this matrix which had ch uh, chi, sh chi, sh chi, ch chi, and then uh, now this was the original matrix so what we want to do is that we change we don't change the other parameters so when we calculate c t um, or t here depends on how you want to look at it so these are going to be zero and then the same thing is true for x and uh, well, uh, x and y so the only change now is that for the y we want to get back uh, y so the third parameter has to be one and then there is no z in this form and uh, then we have look at the z parameter the fourth parameter has to be uh, one so this is the way when we do the uh, matrix vector multiplication that we can get back these results on the top so this is actually the general form of the uh, Lorentz transformation in three uh, plus one dimensions. So this is the Lorentz matrix. Usually we also put a two underscore to show that this is um, this is a matrix, and uh, now it's a matrix depending on on the chi 
parameter. The next thing to introduce is the super important and useful formalism called four vector formalism. So 1.7 is the four vector formalism. So that essentially just means that we put you know space time into into one vector. So we were already saying that we have ct, x, y, and z as a vector, contains four elements. So this is uh, a four vector. There are going to be other parameters in physics which are four vectors, and so it's good to make it a formalism and just make a notion that I'm going to call all these parameters. So these are essentially uh, space-time coordinates, denote, I'm going to denote them all with uh, x, and then the index here, x0, will mean that it is ct, and then x1, x2, and x3 are the parameters. So x0 is ct, x1 is x, x2 is y, and x3 is z. Okay, so these one, two, three are not powers. This is not uh, x squared or x cubed. These are just an index which show the number in where they are in the in the vector. So I'm going to call this x mu. It's a four vector. So mu is the parameter which goes from one to from zero to one to three, or the number of dimensions uh, minus one. So you know, if we have a four dimensional space time, then it goes up to three. If we have, you know, 11 dimensions, then it goes up to, to 10. So this x mu is a four vector. For uh, the coordinates in uh, in space time in uh, three plus one the space time. So the reason why we introduce this is that it's super handy. Uh, we can rewrite the um, the Lorentz transformation just. To have the vector like that, x0, x1, x2, x3 is the same as our um, usual cosine chi, sine hyperbolic chi, sine hyperbolic chi. Uh, this is a sine. This is cosine hyperbolic chi 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. And then we have x. Uh, 0 prime, x1 prime, x2 prime, x3 prime was the right hand side of that vector. The other reason why we could just uh, do this is uh, because like, we should move on from this uh, chi notion as it was super relevant for, for 1 plus 1 dimensions, but, uh, but we should, we should uh, move on a bit. And we express it with uh, with the velocity instead. So we know that uh, chi was the arcus tangent tangent hyperbolic. So okay, that's hard to read. So that's uh, arcus tangent hyperbolic of v over c. You know this just came from the fact that the Tangent hyperbolic of chi was v over c, so if I do the inverse, that's going to be the arcus tangent hyperbolic. Now you remember that v was the velocity of the moving plane. And uh, so we also figured it out that um, bit from this, and also the rules of uh, of what uh, how the sine hyperbolic relates to the tangent hyperbolic we can put back this more physical notion to the uh, matrix so sine 
hyperbolic chi was the tangent hyperbolic chi divided into 1 over the square of the tangent hyperbolic chi and the cosine hyperbolic was 1 over just the same thing in the denominator which is 1 minus the tangent hyperbolic uh, square chi. And this is just some repetition of what we did earlier. So based on this thing, I can, you know, continue this, that uh, this matrix is essentially the, um, the tangent hyperbolic chi was uh, V over C. So I, uh, that's what we have here. And then I, um, I do not actually want to write so much. So I'm going to you know that this is actually called the beta. So beta is the the ratio ratio of uh, velocity to c, and uh, the gamma is one over one minus beta in that case, the square, sorry. And this is the Lorentz parameter, Lorentz parameter. So, you know, this is, this means beta over the square root of one minus beta squared. But then if one minus beta squared is defined to be gamma, then sine chi is the beta gamma, while the cosine is just the gamma. That makes our life much easier. Uh, so I am just writing this back. This is gamma. This is beta gamma. This is beta gamma. And this is gamma. This is zero. 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 Zero. One. Zero. 0, 0, 0, 1. And I have the x mu with the prime version on the right hand side. This is a vector. So this is then expressed uh, with the velocity. And I was not writing so much with, uh, with the 1 over uh, square root of uh, V over C. So if I want to read of uh, what the value of um, X uh, zero is, then what I do, right, is that uh, I multiply the, well, if I could just move to the new, this new portion, that uh, I, I multiply the gamma with, um, oh, uh, okay, so uh, let's, let's be less lazy and uh, write this out. I actually already did write it out here, but let's write it out again. This is x0 prime, and x1 prime, and x2 prime, and x3 prime. So when I'm getting the x0 parameter, I am multiplying this gamma with the x0 prime, and then I am multiplying the beta gamma with the x1 prime and then I um, multiply this 0 with uh, this one and um, let's do a triangle here triangle 0 with this x3 so the, the zeros parameter now that I have just numbers I could rewrite this in a, in a more handy Way, uh, then that we can say that this x zero was blue was the zeros parameter or the zeros uh, row and the zeros column multiplied with the x primes zeros uh, row and then to that we added the Lorentz matrix is zero row first column with the x primes first uh, first uh, the second parameter the first row 
And then we have the same thing with the zeros row, then next one, second parameter, x prime second parameter, and then we had the uh, third one, still in the zero row, with the x prime straight. So I promised to color code, but then I, everything became just blue. So we have a green uh, uh, rectangle. So this was the green rectangle. Then we had the curly part. This was the curly part. And we had the triangle. And so this is the triangle. So please note that uh, when we are calculating the zeros value of the unprimed x, then the Lorentz matrix always had a zero here. So we were always going in the zeros row. This is essentially the sum of the lambda uh, Lorentz matrix is zeros uh, row and i column with the x primes i um, i row. Well, so there is one more thing that, uh, and then I could say that i goes from 0 to 3. But oh, there is a notional difference that every time we count an index from a uh, non-zero value, then we use the Latin letters. However, when we are counting from 0, which is the situation here, we will use Greek letters. And uh, this Greek letter which we use here is going to be the new letter. So we, count, we are summing for the new Greek letter. So this is the zero, and this is new now, and the x prime is again on the new index. And this was just the first, well, the zeroth component of the x. If I want to do the first component of the x, then I would replace this uh, index here to one. So I can make a, a more general statement then, that uh, x mu, right, that was our original index, is a summation for nu, which goes from 0, goes to 3, and then I had the lambda matrix, and I had a nu here, and I had the x prime nu here, and um, so the only thing is that I put zeros here, but now if we are interested in the first one, we will put one. If you're interested in the second one, we will put two. If you're interested in three, we will put uh, three. So this is just the index mu. So this is the Lorentz. This is the same Lorentz transformation. But it's a much short-handed uh, writing. And actually, there is something uh, which makes it even shorter, which is called the Einstein summation convention. So Einstein was the laziest physicist of all, and Einstein, Einstein's uh, summation convention. So this thing says that uh, if an index, if a, yes, if a letter or you know like an index is is repeated then we are doing a summation. So if we have a lower index, which is identical to the upper index, if, uh, you know, um, okay, I can just write down lower index is the same as the upper index, that just means automatic summation. So this same red thing can be written with the Einstein summation just by saying that it's x mu is the same as the lambda mu nu 
x prime nu. Because this, there is a nu here and there is a nu here, Einstein convention, this means a summation. So let's now look at uh, the arc length again, so that uh, things will also get nicer. So in the arc length, we had ds square equal to c square dt square minus dx square minus dy square minus dz square. But now we say that, oh, wow, well, this is the uh, <clears throat> dx zeros parameter, right? Squared minus dx1 square minus dx2 square minus dx3 square. It's, I know it's confusing, but so one of them is, is a power, the other is just a notion for uh, for the index. So um, we could actually write this down uh, if we introduce something which is called a metric tensor. So a metric tensor is denoted with G um, and then it has two indexes and so these two indexes are usually still denoted as mu and nu. So I could just write here that uh, G mu nu is the metric tensor. So uh, metric tensor times the dx up mu and uh, dx up nu. So it is a summation, right, for mu and it's a summation for nu as well because we have the parameters up and down. Okay, so when we think about tensors, uh, as physicists, we usually just uh, think about matrices. So this is actually can be imagined as the diagonal matrix, diagonal with the values of one, minus one, minus one, minus one. So, you know, imagining that this is one, minus one, minus one, minus one here, and then it zeroes everywhere else. So this is the G menu metric tensor with the choice of uh, the signature one minus one minus one minus one. We can introduce a new notion, um, which is called covariant and contravariant components. So covariant component. That means that uh, we put the index down. So x mu is the covariant, while contravariant is when we have the x, the, the index up. How do we do this? Well, this metric tensor is actually what's, uh, what can lower and raise components. So x up upper index, or lower index mu is calculated as g mu nu, times r x um, mu, while the x uh, uppercase mu is calculated as the g um, mu nu, which is uh, then multiplied with the x nu. So the, g, the, the metric tensor is, um, can lower or raise these, <coughs> these indexes. So that's nice because then we notice that one of them, this, this thing up here, is essentially a multiplication of a covariant and a covariant component. So all this leads to that ds squared is this dx mu down times dx mu up. And uh, please notice that there was a repeating index. So this has Einstein's convention. OK, what does this really mean for a real life situation? Then x mu 
is a vector in which we have ct and we have minus x with a vector notion. So this means x and y and z. While uh, in the x uppercase or like a, a, a higher index mu is the same as ct vector notion plus x vector. Again, um, x un, un, uh, with, the, with the underlining means x, y, z vector. So we can say that all physical laws must have a form of a covariant equation. So postulate uh, one could be rephrased as all equations must, must have a covariant form. So what does that really mean? That means that uh, the, these indexes have to match in a sense. So um, I think it's easier if, to, if I just give an example. So let's just say that uh, I have an example that some a mu equals some b mu. That is a covariant equation. This is covariant. However, if I say that uh, I have a mu nu equals to b mu, this is not, not covariant. I have an index mu on the left hand side, and I have an index mu on the right hand side, so it should be fine. But I also have an index nu on the left hand side, which is not an, at all uh, existing on the right side. So all of the equations in, uh, in physics have to have a form which is something like that. Of course, you know, like we can have any number of indexes, that's, that's fine. So, uh, so discussing, um, you know, uh, a, a mu nu equals to a b mu nu is going to be fine. Is is covariant, and so on. If you can have any number of indexes, if you want, it just should be the same uh, in both of the directions. So let's uh, introduce uh, one more interesting thing, which is called the covariant differential operators. So we were discussing that we could have this dx meant that I have a d over dx. I, had the, I have been using this, uh, this notion a while ago. So what we can do here is uh, that when we include, introduce this uh, covariant uh, differential operators, diff operators, we say that d mu means, so this is kind of the definition, the derivative of something by the coordinates by its nth derivative. And then I can also have the uh, other version when I have the mu in the upper, in the ceiling, they say. <laughs> That's when we derive the thing by x mu is down. So when the mu is up in the derivative operator, then the mu is down in the x. So if I want to you know write it down, this means that this this uh, uh, the mu means uh, one over c times d t with uh, with with this notion. And then dx, dy, and dz. And then here, this means that uh, I have 1 over c, dt is up now, dx, dy, dz. 
So this is just very short notions of, uh, of derivatives. And we also encountered this uh, um, Laplacian operator in the intro, intro part, in the in mathematical background intro. And so we can discuss what the T2 means. So it's also called del sometimes. So del squared means that I am multiplying d mu with d mu in the C. So I have a repeating mu index up and down. So that means it's a sum. So I am summing up uh, 1 over C d t with uh, multiplying with the other d t. So that's going to be d t squared. And then this other second t has a 1 over C2. So that's 1 over C squared plus the minus of the uh, derivative of x multiplied with the derivative of x minus the dy squared minus the z squared. So please note that this part is the definition of uh, the square of nabla. So this is 1 over c squared um, derivative by the time minus the nabla vector squared. I uh, hope you are familiar with the nabla. If not, then there is a intro to mathematical part uh, uh, also attached to these videos. So we can also remember that the square of the nabla though is the definition of the Laplacian operator. So what you see here is the 1 over c squared dt squared minus the Laplacian operator denoting the triangle. And just so that we have more fun with these notions, this whole thing is usually denoted with the box operator. And this box operator is called the D'Alembert or D'Alembertian operator. So D'Alembert operator. Also, sometimes it's called box operator. So the box operator, the D'Alembert operator, is a derivative by time component minus the derivative by the, the, the second, actually the second derivative of the uh, spatial components. Okay, so now that we went through all this uh, new mathematical formalism with the four vectors, let's actually apply that to some physical quantities. So this is 1.8, and we are going to discuss uh, for uh, velocity. And for, for uh, acceleration. As the name suggests, both of these are actually four vectors. So the definition of uh, the four velocity is uh, actually denoted with um, u. And as we already introduced, we use the index mu, which goes from 0 to 3. And it is, as we already had uh, in like um, mechanics established, that it is the derivative of the coordinates. So the coordinates are denoted as the x mu, and we are deriving by uh, by time. But we also discussed the time and uh, and, uh, and space are the same thing. So essentially, what is invariant is the s the line element. So that is the definition of uh, the four velocity. We or we have been discussing that uh, the ds can be calculated as one minus or actually the dt. So we, we had this calculation of uh, for the dt where we established that uh, it is v one minus uh, v squared over c squared times dt, and uh, that was the dt prime. And so if we want to go back to what ds is, we will have to multiply this whole thing with a c. And so um, from this, the definition of uh, u mu is going to be um, a big vector with uh, 1 over 1 minus uh, v squared over c squared 
under the square root. That, that's the first component, right? And then um, we have v1 as uh, also v, or vx. It doesn't really matter which way we go. Let's just call it vx here. So vx over d square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. And then we have vy, the y component of the velocity, over the same v squared over c squared. And we have the um, z component of velocity divided with the same 1 over v squared over c squared. And so that's a vector. So it's a 4 vector. It's almost like uh, the... Um, the velocity because we have velocity components but we extend it to it to the zero component which is just uh, this uh this this lorentz factor essentially the gamma so i could uh, you know rewrite this with uh, with the gamma notion that this is actually gamma and uh, um, um, gamma vx and gamma v y and gamma vz much shorter than up there. So please note that uh, this is a dimensionless quantity. And uh, we can see that by just doing the, the square of it. So, you know, uh, when we're doing squares, that means that we multiply u mu with u mu when it's in the ceiling. And then, as I just discussed, the definition is then the x uh, mu down here over the s, and that is the dx mu is up here divided with the ds. So um, that means that this is the x uh, mu times the x mu up here divided with ds squared. But if you remember what we when we introduced the the four vectors, and we discussed the d, uh, the x mu, and then we learned that the x, uh, x yes, so the the definition of the line element. Well, this is one of the advantages of all this uh, new formalism that this is actually just d s squared. So we have d s squared over d s squared, which is just one, which is a nice thing to see. And uh, very similarly, we can introduce. Uh, for acceleration so for acceleration and uh, that is with the same logic that a mu is the same as the derivative of the velocity of the four velocity the d u mu over this d s and so this is something which you will see that you know f equals m times a it was true through Classically, it's not true anymore in special relativity, but um, when we have the four force, which is the next uh, time, the four A version is true in uh, special relativity. Okay, so with this, uh, we reached the end of uh, this video. So we started with uh, the postulates uh, from Einstein, and based on those two somewhat simple statements, we ended up uh, getting the uh, idea of uh, invariant variables like the line element and then the proper time. And then from these, using these uh, invariant variables, we set up a transformation when we move from one coordinate system to another coordinate system, which are moving with respect to each other with velocity v. That's what we call the Lorentz transformation. And after that, we introduce some new notions, um, which will be very helpful for the upcoming material. So um, please subscribe to the channel so that you can see the next uh, video, which is going to be about the principle of the least action.